So, uh, lots of us know Harpo as, as the pizza man, but Harpo has got another life. He's like a cat. He's got a life as a... Madam, here's your jumbo shot of your scotch. Uh, thank you. Um, Harpo has got a life actually as, as a musician and also as a chef. Now, Harpo, your, before you began uh, pizzas, you, your life was music. Yep. You've come back to vinyl. Everybody's going to computer music and CDs yeah. and computers. You're yeah. here with this old-fashioned stuff. Why? Because vinyl is the best. And I mean, uh, we grew up playing vinyl music and the vinyl is coming back big time, you know. And uh, I, 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 I yet feel that the DJ techniques are much better on, on vinyl, actually. What is your connection with the vinyl disc? Your, your, your physical, emotional connection? In my emotion in the sense, I mean, my career began with, with, with Wine Island. I, I, I always, uh, you know, thought that it was, it was uh, you know, never, never played on anything else other than Wine Island. So my connection is huge with Wine Island. Hapu, tell us all about your days uh, taking bus after work to Bento to Beach Hotel, going to Gabo's house. Um, mm. that, that, that era that will never come back again. That was the best year I would think, in a part of my career, I would, I, I mean, that has stuck in my head because I had to finish my hotel school. What I take time? Uh, five in the evening, go down to the port station, jump a bus, put my Walkman with my TDK cassette on. Of the TDKs, yes. Yeah, yes. you know, uh, takes me one and a half hours, two hours to get into Benthota. There was no expressway, no? No. <laughs> <laughs> the, old, the old gold road, okay? Park, get myself dropped there, go and have a quick shower, get into a small boutique there, have a quick hopper, get onto a push cycle, put my haversack on with my records. And there you go, you know. The vinyls. The vinyl, you know, vinyls were the thing, you know. Then, and then you uh, you uh, go to Bento the Beach Hotel and you uh, play music, and that was that that was that was the life, you know. And that was that was always, uh, I mean, a huge part of my career was the the industry, the DJ industry at that time was, you know, amazing, you know. And uh, saying that, so you know. Here I am, yet loving what I, loving what I started doing, and I, I think it's, a, it's an awesome thing. Tell me, uh, as a musician, Hapu, what is it as that a DJ, as a DJ, yeah, cool musician, yeah, uh, as, uh, what is it that the vinyl disc has, yeah, that computers and CDs do not? Have? You see, it's the, it's that feel of holding that vinyl. Computers are just buttons. Here you actually hold it, okay. and you you know turn it. You turn it, you wipe it. Okay. So that whole love for the vinyl, you know. Today people just put a computer on and just play music. Right. So you know, so this is it, man. This is the music. Yeah. What advice do you have for the DJs of today? They're I mean, uh, a generation apart. Obviously. Yeah, a huge generation apart. But I, what I feel is any DJ should be able to read the crowd not do what he likes playing and the most important thing is to be able to communicate with customers. Today a DJ just plays music, he doesn't like to hold this in his hand, the microphone, forget it, he cannot talk. Why doesn't he talk? They have no confidence to get onto a microphone, they, all they know is, oh, tell them to talk to a thousand people, tell them to introduce the song, no way. I mean that's what they should be learning to do, you know, it's important. Any unforgettable incidents that happened in Benthot in those vinyl disc days of, 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 the, of the 70s <laughs> that will stick in your mind till your dying day? My goodness me, I think I had too much of toddy one day, one morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I morning? One mo yeah, one morning we drank too much of toddy and I went and uh, sat on a rock and I got those sea pencils yeah. stuck in my f under my feet, you know. Okay. And that was that's something I'll never forget. I had taken them out one by one. Ooh. That was, that's, that, that, yet, I yet remember that. How about the story is you uh, went, you were on a pillion of, on, on a bike in Hatton <laughs> and uh, it, the, the bike took a bend and the bike hit a cow and Harpo hit a bull, the ground, hit the a bull, bull, the bull, bull, hit a bull. And the bull shut all over you. That was total bullshit, man. Absolute bullshit, <laughs> yeah, what happened there? You were there, bathed in bullshit? Yeah, I was actually bathed in bullshit. There was, there was this guy, you know, we were, passing Ratnapura Junction and I see this bull cross on the road and I tell my friend who's, on, who's riding, I said, hey, hold it, hold it, you know. And the bull cross, he said, no, 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 I can negotiate this whole thing. And he goes, whack him in the middle of his stomach and I get thrown over this pillion, land on the pavement and this bull 
keep shitting on me. Impact on his stomach. Yeah. Impact on his stomach. It was total bullshit, man. I tell you, that was so, that's something I'll never forget in my life. And it was it was amazing, you know. So I think on that absolutely shitty note, uh, <laughs> with Harpo the DJ, we will now catch you. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll meet Harpo the chef. He went to Claire Casper's Claremont School many, many, many years ago before he became a DJ. He learned how to bake, how to measure, how to cook. And that's what's helping him today uh, with his absolutely uh, flourishing pizza, pizza and pasta business. So we catch you in our next section, uh, sequence, sequence Z, Harpo Pizza. Yes. <laughs>